Talk to us real briefly about what an auto rotate looks like. Mass bumping generally is involved when you're in bad weather. And you're saying you, you can get into a gyration where it flexes so much it, it strikes the tail of the aircraft. If you don't put the collective down quick enough, the rotors slow quickly to the point where they droop. Well, here's what we know so far, folks, about the horrific uh, helicopter crash in the Hudson River uh, just a few days ago. Uh, six people lost their lives, a pilot and five passengers, an entire family. Our, our hearts go out to those folks. It's just absolutely tragic. And uh, we uh, want to encourage our audience to pray for those folks as well. Uh, but it was a tourist flight, uh, one that anybody can purchase uh, up the Hudson River. It's a very congested airspace. Uh, but they have a lot of these tourism flights on the helicopters, and they uh, went north uh, on the Hudson uh, up to the George Washington Bridge. Manhattan's off the right side. New Jersey's off the left side. They turned around just beyond the uh, George Washington Bridge and came back down to take a look at the Statue of Liberty. I think the helicopter was at about 900 feet when something catastrophic happened. And as you can see from the photos that we've looked at over and over again, the video, uh, the airplane or the aircraft just came apart. Uh, and there's really not a very good explanation for that right now. But what we have with us today is a, an expert. Uh, it's Colonel uh, Joseph Yanessa. Uh, he's a retired Marine Corps helicopter pilot, thousands of hours of flying time uh, in the helicopter, where I'm very limited and I'm just a fixed wing guy. I've been dying to talk to a, a helicopter expert. Uh, to talk to us a little bit. So uh, let's bring uh, the Colonel in. Colonel uh, Joe, it's uh, good to have you with us today. How are you today? Uh, top of the morning. Uh, happy to be back. All right. Uh, and we went Houston with the travels. best of the best. We went right straight to the Marine Corps for this one. And uh, <laughs> and I say that with all sincerity. I've flown with a lot of guys over the years, a lot of ex-military Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps, and the Marine Corps pilots I fly with, uh, and I'm not just trying to blow sunshine at you, were absolutely the best because there were limited slots in the Marine Corps to get a pilot position, and the competition was much stiffer over there than it was any place else. So my understanding is that you've got, uh, tell us a little bit about your background in the helicopter, how many hours do you have, and, and so forth, and then we'll kind of get into talking about maybe this accident in the Hudson. Uh, well, 30-some uh, years in the Marine Corps, and uh, uh, for the, mo the majority of that time, they let me fly a helicopter. I have a limited amount of time behind a desk. So you're familiar with this um, Bell helicopter. It was a Bell 206L helicopter that crashed. <clears throat> and uh, you said you, in we were talking earlier, you had flown a variant or one of the, like the, I think you said the grandchild of, of this helicopter. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, it would have been this helicopter's grandfather, mm -hmm. the uh, original Bell Ranger that was in a uh, flight school. And that was the first adaptation to that, to the Bell helicopter that uh, I ever had. And the current 206 is a variation of that improved over, you know, uh, decades. Yeah. Uh, typically, yeah. when something goes wrong in a helicopter, helicopter pilots are trained to do an auto-rotate, right? And that would be if the that transmission goes bad or the engine goes bad, but the rotors are still attached, sure. the tail rotor is still attached, the aircraft is still intact. Sure. Talk to us real briefly about what an auto-rotate looks like. Sure. Well, I, let me just back up just slightly and say that in training for to be a helicopter pilot you understand early on that there are things that will could be could go wrong that are totally out of your control right and we call that the catastrophic catastrophic event and and you don't really you can't really practice for those things right. uh, and that's like the the mass separation or the tail boom separates. Yeah. There is no actual uh, emergency procedure for that. That's catastrophic. So the things we practice for are the recoverable things that mm -hmm. if the pilot does all right things at the right time, the helicopter is a very, very saving uh, uh, aircraft because it does have the ability to auto rotate as long as your rotors are still intact right and the only reason they wouldn't be intact is if the mast fell off uh, separated 
or there was a transmission freeze, right. which uh, in itself stops it. Uh, and then another is one rotor separates. You can have a single rotor separate or the servos to them. So there's three or four things that are catastrophic or can cause this right. catastrophic event. Right. So the auto rotation is the key survivable uh, way out of any engine failure or event uh, in a helicopter. Yeah. And clearly um, that was not the case with this aircraft in the Hudson because they it was the catastrophic uh, example you were giving us yeah. where the airframe actually came apart. And at that, there's no, it's the same thing with a fixed wing airplane. Sure. If a wing falls off or a tail falls off, there's you, you can't simulate. Sure. In The aircraft stops flying at that point. And then, okay. as we saw yeah. in the video, it just kind of plummets. Uh, now, there's been right. a lot of conjecture in the news about mast bumping, and I don't understand what that is. Right. Can you talk to me just briefly about what that is, and, and it, does that have anything to do with, with this accident, in your opinion? Okay. Uh, again, we're all conjecture. Right. Nobody was there, and there were no eyewitnesses that actually saw the, the first event. Uh, mass bumping generally is involved when you're in bad weather. Mm -hmm. You get into a wind condition, you get into uh, a certain catastrophic weather events, and you don't have the control. And when you think you're going forward uh, with uh, your control, you're actually mm -hmm. pushing against the movement of the entire mass. I see. And you start jerking back and forth and as you jerk back and forth the mast is jerking back and forth right but then you set up such a cycle that the mast can no longer and it just goes to the extreme but right. once it goes to the extreme it can hit the back the tail boom and once it hits the tail boom um, you're you're now in that catastrophic event. So that, but that I, rotor I would blade, offer. that rotor blade that's spinning on top of the helicopter is actually flexible, right? right. And you're saying yes. you, you can get into a gyration where it flexes so much it it strikes the tail of the aircraft. It strikes the tail. Yeah. But uh, again, with conjecture, that is such a rarity in a yeah. smooth air environment. Right. Um, so uh, now there is the possibility that he was in a weight structure, but I don't think with three little kids, two adults, that mm. that would be the factor. Now, sometimes if you overload, if you're too heavy, you can create a mass bumping because yep. the aircraft is, is forcing itself and the rotors cannot contain the weight. But that's that's really rare yeah Wait, let me offer yes, sir. something else mm -hmm. uh, uh, back to the catastrophic and what i said and i'm not leaning on the pilot on this but um you can also have a tail rotor strike uh either by a pitch server that uh fails and if that pitch server fails one of the rotors goes out of balance with the other rotor. And that can also create that same uh, uh, result where one rotor can, uh, goes uh, opposite the other and can actually droop and hit the tailbone. Ah, okay. Another possibility is if you have an engine failure, <clears throat> If you have an engine failure, the quick reaction of the pilot has to be to push the collective down. If you react to that in an air, uh, or, or let me change the venue. If you don't put the collective down quick enough in an engine failure, the rotors slow quickly to the point where they droop. And there, you can also have a tail boom hit as the first failure of slow rotation because you didn't get into the auto rotation fast enough. So different that, ways to get those rotors to droop, and but the droop is what hits the tail. 
ultimately? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you don't get the collective down, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, your force down, and you don't turn the helicopter to build the speed of the rotors yeah. back up. And the only way you get that back is by quickly heading for the ground yep. uh, to build the rotors back up. But again, that's a pilot quick reaction. Okay. And if you don't react to that, I'm afraid once they slow and there's no longer lift, that's where the droop comes in. That's, see, that's fascinating to me. Uh, that's I'm, that's why I'm so glad we had you on because I, I don't understand how a helicopter works in that regard. My thought on it initially was well, maybe they hit something. They could have been a drone. It, it could have been uh, that the uh, they lost a rotor and and it caused right. such a vibration that the airframe came apart. That's still a possibility, but what you're talking about seems like sure. much more likely. In the accident investigations that I've looked at um, that were survivable, um, sometimes the pilots just didn't react quick enough. Mm. Sometimes when you have a, and I've had these events, I've lost tail rotors, engines, um, and and I hate to say this, but I'm certain that you will admit this. As a pilot, you're always worried about what can happen next, right. and am I ready for it? Um, and what I would say, sometimes if pilots haven't been in enough emergencies, it takes a while to admit you are having right. the emergency you're having. Right. And it's that critical time where uh, survivable uh, uh, incidents, you can survive them if you recognize it and admit it quick right. enough. Yep. And a helicopter, uh, I'm not going to compete with a fixed wing, but I would say in a helicopter, it's most critical to admit it and recognize it immediately yeah i think uh you now, know, based I'm, I'm on not... what we know from this one whatever happened happened quickly uh because the yeah. last transmission everything was normal and the next thing we know seconds later this airplane this aircraft is in parts so it happened fast sure now i've also heard of tail boom separations mm -hmm. but if if the if the entire tail boom separated at the four joints at the four points uh that can also create this, but I'm not so certain in this that the entire tail boom separated. Right. Um, and, right. and again, we, we have so much speculation until uh, you can get it. Now, it's my understanding they haven't the main mast separated. Uh, and if the main mast separated and the rotors are still intact, I I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, uh, because I did see in the uh, in the news the only thing I did hear is they were still looking for that. Yeah, whether they found it or not. So um, you know, it it's very what, what I can see from the video is basically three major parts. There's the main part of the fuselage uh, where the people sure. were the rotors Cab. were spinning off by themselves. And then obviously the tail of the aircraft wasn't attached, so there's there's three major parts. But you're right; the investigation is yeah. going to be fascinating on this one to find out, you know, what was a precipitating event that led to a, an aircraft coming apart that quickly. Uh, I've never seen anything like this before. And, and I w I would offer this, as you just said, they were looking for the rotors. And if you had a rotor impact of a tail boom, I would doubt that the rotors as an in, uh, intact um, two rotors with a mast would have stayed together. Yeah. If a rotor hits a, a tail boom, it's going to uh, uh, break uh, immediately. Rotor, yeah, that, that was my take on it. When I when I saw the video of the of the rotors spinning yeah. off into the water, I thought, well, they're in one piece, and That's... if they if they had struck something, they would disintegrate in a sense. They'd come apart, yes. and you wouldn't have much left. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, another that, kind of another why, mystery. That's why if they were intact, I'm more inclined to lean towards a mast failure. 
there's something we call the Jesus nut. Yeah. Um, yeah. kind of that holds the whole mass in um, to the helicopter, to the train, connects to the transmission. And uh, either of two things, uh, something ca catastrophic had to break for those rotors to be intact and not necessarily hit the tail boom. If it hit the tail boom and stayed intact, that would be a, a, a very, very rare circumstance that's frankly, I can't imagine. Well, Joe, thank you for this. This has been extremely helpful and very insightful. <laughs> Uh, I've learned a lot today about how helicopters work and then and then in a sense how something like this could go wrong. And uh, I think it's going to be very helpful for our audience to to get a grip on what happened. Our hearts still go out to the folks that lost their lives in this uh, tragic accident. And we hope nothing like yeah. this ever happens again, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And the bell, uh, I, I, I don't mean to plug them. I mean, I... Uh, they're a very, very safe aircraft. I don't want to let people think that helicopters aren't safe. They're exceptionally safe. Um, so this is uh, this is a rare phenomenon, and, and none of us. And I, I say this as a investigator for many years on helicopter accidents. Don't jump to conclusions. Uh, so many times. It is a one in a million failure that um, never happened before, never happens again. And so don't jump to speculation until they've had a chance to really. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I read a stat earlier on the first video about uh, I think there's been very few accidents, especially in New York State. Uh, with this tourist yeah. business, and it's very safe. Uh, but when it goes wrong, it makes the news, and people watch that, and they get alarmed by those Absolutely. things. The Bell helicopter has been a workhorse forever. Um, the military yes. wouldn't be using them if it wasn't an extremely reliable platform. So, like you said, it's kind yeah. of a head scratcher in a sense of this is a one in a million mm -hmm. uh, incident, and uh, you know right. the NTSB report yeah. will come out at some point, and we'll do a follow up video with that. And uh, Joe, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. This has been very helpful for me, and I think our audience is going to really enjoy uh, what you've had to say, even though this is in the midst of a really kind of a dark situation. Uh, but it gives us some insight as to what maybe potentially happened with this, uh, this helicopter. So thank you, sir, for joining us. Appreciate it. More than happy to. Uh, thanks for having me. Okay, very good. Well, that was fascinating. Um, I... I, you know, again, I'm a fixed wing guy, so I, I don't know that much about helicopters. Um, learning that from a guy that does helicopter investigations that this is a one in a million. And, uh, and that Jesus nut thing is is something that I'm going to go do some research on and look into. Uh, and there's a lot of moving parts in a helicopter. That's for sure, my friends. Uh, and when it goes wrong, it goes wrong quickly. Uh, and it could have been any number of things. The, the jury's kind of still out on exactly what happened. Uh, in this crash. But what we do know is that um, all the lives were lost and that uh, there was a catastrophic failure. It's not something that the crew can even prepare for or plan on. So, um, folks, we'll get back to you when the NTSB report comes out uh, with a follow-up video. Um, this one was very insightful for us. Uh, but as for now, uh, this is all the details we've got up to this point. So now you know, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.